Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, you're looking at a major part of the Soviet starting positions. At the moment I'm trying to think of something better to do with the camera, but I'm afraid uh, we'll have to do with that for the moment. I will move around the cam in a second. Once I know uh, where the action is going on, then I try to figure out something. But right now we're going to walk through the first steps of the game, and then we see how things develop and what uh, action is sort of of interest uh, to us. Okay, uh, let me just have a brief look at the sequence of play. So we're starting with the spawning phase. I already can see by quick glance, uh, though I've never played the game before, there's no line of sight right now. Now the spawning phase is interesting because right after the spotting phase, basically, we give orders to units and we are only allowed to give fire orders and short held and fire orders so basically moving and firing in one turn to units that have spotted enemy units during the spotting phase. We can't do that, uh, well, let's say later on. There's no opportunity to uh, spot the enemy units uh, for the purpose of the fire order and the short halt order. So that's why the spotting phase is interesting, just for those of you who don't know the game. Uh, but now we're going to omit the spotting phase because there's nothing to spot and we're going to dive right into the next phase which is the command phase. Now basically in this step we are determining the number of commands every commander has available uh, to distribute once he is starting to give orders. And for that purpose we count the active units and by active in this scenario I mean we do not include the mounted units. Instead we're just going to count the vehicles that are currently moving. Oh, well, not necessarily moving, but that are currently on the board. Uh, there are some other exceptions and special cases for counting active units, but for our purposes, it's basically just uh, excluding the mounted units. So we have a total, according to this narrow description, of 25 Soviet units, and we subtract from that. <laughs> seven units, if I see that correctly. So that nets me with 18 units. And uh, for the Americans, we subtract only four of a total of 25 again. So they have 21 units. Having a look at the, um, let's say, relevant chart, in that case the available command chart. I'm trying to show you this here. Let's see if that's working. Yeah, the beige one, or sort of sand colored one. I don't know if you can read this. I can really use some feedback because my screen here is really small and I barely see, but I think you should see it. Uh, so we're going to cross-reference um, that screen, uh, the chart, and basically we're going to have a look at it for the Americans. Uh, that would mean we are looking at the seasoned um, column and we're looking at the, what was it again, 21 row. So we have the row for 10 units up here that nets us with uh, 6 available commands plus another 10, that's another 6, so we have 12 orders and 1 unit that nets us with 0 further commands. Meaning that we have 12 commands for the Americans uh, that we can issue. Now for the Soviets we said we have 18 units and 18 means in that case we have 10 again 6, they are also seasoned and 8 that makes uh, 5 orders so the net result for the Soviets is 11. 11 orders for the Soviets, 12 for the Americans. Now the next step we can basically already give the orders. Yes, we can. There are a few optional rules that we are currently not playing with. Disrupted communication step. I haven't read the rules on that. And, uh, I think disruptive communications or disrupted communications are only available in scenarios that mention them in the scenario rules. And this scenario as a basic scenario does not include disrupted communications. Uh, what I do, do include uh, is the command span rule and that is something that does have an effect on this particular situation because the Soviets 
have only one company commander that is in the far from your point of view right corner you can see that at the moment I think over there uh, the far right corner back there maybe you can move that a little yeah uh, the company commander is here and he has a command span of eight hexes and that basically means that he exerts let's say command authority in a radius of eight hexes around that unit. Now the Americans do have um, two command units. Let me just see if the command span range is actually correct for the Soviets. The Soviets actually have eight. Did I just say six? I'm not quite sure. But in any case, uh, the other units on the left shoulder, or the Soviet right shoulder on your left, uh, are currently definitely outside of the command span range which means that we halve the orders and round down and that's the number we have uh, regarding the move and short held orders um, meaning that once we half the 11 down to 5.5 and round down the 5.525 uh, the Soviet commander can issue a total of let me just fix that a total of um, only five move and all short held orders. Now the Americans do not have the uh, this kind of trouble at the moment. They have a command span of ten hexes and they have two command units, and all of their units are currently within the command span. And once even a single unit is outside of the command span, the formation starts to suffer uh, this particular penalty. All right, let's issue orders. We issue orders before we determine who's going first and who's going second. That's one of the interesting things uh, that the game does. Uh, how about we start with the Soviets in the back on the on your left side now, or your center actually, and we're going to see uh, what they will be doing. Now the first turn should be quite straightforward. Um, I want to move this tank platoon behind these trees, maybe leave them on the ridge and take up support by fire positions against these tanks that are probably trying to get either to this fort or to this bridge or stay in the forest. I want the BTR that is with this tank platoon to set a position on top of the hill and dismount the any tank gun and the uh, ATGM, the any tank guided missile, on top of the hill to provide additional firepower to this uh, tank platoon and to also be able to block any movement outside of Echo 2. So this village here is uh, the village Echo 2, uh, right next to the village bridge, if you remember. Uh, that's another victory point location. Uh, this BTR platoon will also move, try to reach the uh, tree line here and dismount the units there. Same basically for this tank platoon, they will move up the hilltop and uh, fight against this force of the American units or of the American company. And on the right, you currently can't see them anymore. There we go. On the right, uh, we have two tank platoons plus the company commander, and they're going to assault and try to cross the bridge and forward here and seize it and outflank the American tanks. That's my sort of mediocre beginner plan without knowing the rules properly. This is more of a sort of learning vehicle to me, but that's what we're going to do. So what we need, long story short, is basically a bunch of movement orders. We have one, two, three, four, five stacks that can move together. We can issue a total of five movement orders. And I think that means we are just about good. Do we have anything else to consider? I don't think so at the moment. Just to get into the gist of things, I will still place the command markers covertly. Usually, as you probably guess, that's not really necessary for solitaire play. Let's see, do we have any more movement orders? Yep, this one here. Okay, issues or commands issued for the Soviets. And let's see if I can move you into sort of a more preferable position. 
so we can see something of what's going on with the Americans. Let me just see if I can fix that. Just hold on a second. Lots of cables going on. I actually place you on top of the on top of another lamp actually. Yeah, that's sort of the American starting position. Let's see if I can make that a bit more clear to you. We start with the units in the back over here, right? You see the road. The road is leading up to um, to the, what was it called, village bridge. And in that case, we also want to issue a movement order. And what's also interesting here is that because all these units are in a road column, they can share one command. What they can also do is uh, utilize the road movement factor. So they can indeed move 11 hexes or even 13 for the M113s. But they have to stick together. They can change the order of movement or the, uh, let's say, the position within the column. So I would assume uh, the M113s can't run away uh, from the M60s right now because that would mean they would change the position since they're getting ahead of them. Right now they're right behind each other and if the M113s would move 13 hexes and the M60s can only move 11 hexes, that would mean there's one hex free in between them and I think that's not legal. But they're going to move and trying to uh, get into Echo 2 as fast as they possibly can. The M150s, can you see them at the moment? You remember the guys, the HGM guys we put on top of the hill? Yeah, you can see them. Um, they will get an overwatch order, I would say. Yeah. They get an overwatch order. I should get myself something like a threat or so, so I can check line of sights. Ah, that the board is not really flat is absolutely obnoxious. Okay, let me take another sip. Long story short, the same will be happening to these guys down there. We will give them a move order. Also, road column, they will try to get into this uh, tree line. You currently can't see. Oh, you can. It's not, not really a line. Uh, you see the five hexes of forest to the right, the top right. They're going to get into this area and that ends the command issuing step I think let me just double check with the sequence of play looks all right looks good to me and in this scenario to uh, determine the initiative we basically just roll whoops just roll uh, percentile dice per player there is no there's no um, penalty, no bonus here. There's no bonus from um, the unit grade, I think it's called, better in season, things like that. It's just a straightforward uh, rolling die. So let's see what the Americans roll. That's uh, 15. So we just say that the colored dies are always the 10. And for the Soviets, uh, that's uh, 23. So the Soviets win the initiative. And they decide to go first. Now the interesting thing is that going first means you can shoot first but move second because obviously moving second is an advantage. But the next step would be the on the next phase would be the first in the air phase actually. Uh, we skip that. We don't have any air units. I don't have. Uh, I didn't read the rules already for the air units. Uh, next phase is the combat phase. Indirect fire combat step. We don't have indirect fire units. Direct fire combat uh, steps. I already know no one has issued any firing orders. No one um, was able to since we haven't spotted anything in the spotting phase. Movement phase. Close assault hand to hand combat step. Uh, I am not 100% on these rules either. If I remember correctly, I have to read up on that once this becomes an issue. I will do that probably after this video. Um, but the next step is the movement and overrun combat step, and that's already interesting for us. So 
We have lots of movement commands. We are playing with, uh, for those of you who know the term staggered initiative, but that's not a thing in the movement step. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about right now, uh, we will have a look at that once the uh, shooting starts. But for now, one player is going to move and then the other one is going to move. And we're going to start with the Americans since uh, they lost the initiative. Let's uncover this command. What a surprise, it's a move command and we can move 11 hexes with these units as long as we're staying, starting and ending our movement on the road. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We don't want to leave the forest. 1, 2, 3, 4, well basically just behind uh, the other column. It's movement number 1. Let's adjust the camera again. There you go. Just walk over there. I'm going to move the M113s first. That's um, where we're trying to go. We're trying to get into Echo 2, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Tanks follow suit. And I would suggest one of the tank platoons is moving into the tree line in the next phase and then we're trying to move the rest. Yeah, I guess we're trying to move the rest uh, into the village. All right. Uh, that's the movement of the Americans. No overwatching fire, no overwatch fire is triggered in the meantime. <clears throat> Let's go to the Soviets. Let's move you back again and fix the board once I moved you guys to your next position. Uh, that's a hassle. I definitely need some plexiglass. Okay, what can you see? You can see the three platoons back there, so let's start with them. Let's start with uh, this unit here. Let's move the T-72s and the BTR up the hill. and. They have a movement factor of 7, so it's 1, 2, we are in clear terrain. Uh, that's a change of heights, change of elevation, so an additional 1, a total of 3. Again, elevation, 4, 5, 6, change of direction, 7. So you can change your direction when you're moving, once per hex, uh, moving to let's say, an adjacent hex side, if that makes sense. So you can turn one hex side. Yeah, that, that's probably the best explanation. You can turn, or you could possibly turn more, but that movement is not free. Instead, you would need to pay an additional movement cost depending on the terrain you're turning in. Okay. <clears throat> Next platoon, the BTRs, Motor Rifle Company reinforced with the HMG. Uh, seven points of movement. Movement one, two, three, four, five, six. I assume they also spend one in clear terrain. Let's check. Yep, they do. Uh, they can definitely can enter medium woods. No, they can't. Uh, they actually have to spend six movement points, so they can do that in the next um, in the next turn. Maybe you, the infantry will already dismount. To do that, I think that might make the most sense. We'll have a look at that in the next turn. Next platoon here, and this is going to be interesting. We're going to have a look at uh, the first bogging check, I think. So that's one, two, probably three for the next hex, so a total of five. Light woods, that's, oh, well, that's another one, not lying track. Two. Uh, that's another two. So as I said, three in total because of the change of elevations. And so we have spent five. How much will we spend for the next scrub hex? An additional one definitely for the change of elevations. Scrub, 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 scrub. Two. So there will be another three. And we can't pay that. In the next turn, we have to do the boring check since we're moving out of the light woods. Okay. 
Can you see? No, you can't. There you go. I think that's it. Yep. You see the stacks back here. Uh, two tank platoons moving this one first. They are trying. What are they trying? What are they trying? Well, they are the support by fire guys. This sex or this sex might be suitable. I would take the lower one since we're getting the bonus of hitting, of possibly hitting the deck and of getting the falling shots anyway, whether we are one or two elevations above the enemy unit and we save another movement point. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, turn. And in that case, it will be interesting to check the line of sight of the M150, but a small ridge seems to... No, it's not blocking. It's the uh, same elevation. So this might be triggering overwatch fire. Uh, do we have anything suitable to check the line of sight, any sort of threat? Can at least try to take this with the rough direction at least. Now that should be working fine. That should be working fine. So let's trigger Overwatch Fire. <sighs> okay, triggering Overwatch Fire. Both M150s are firing at the T72 platoon. We remove the Overwatch command. We add Let's see, we add an A fire marker. So we remember that these units have fired for the next spawning phase. And we uh, try to, <laughs> uh, operational term is trying, we're trying to count the range. Uh, let's start here. That should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 6, 7, 27 hexes. That should definitely be in the range. We're just double checking because this is uh, our first, our first uh, firefight and on top of that with 80 GMs. So 25 we said, I hope we said 25. Uh, 26? I think it was 26. Would it make a difference? No, it wouldn't. So the point blank range is uh, 38 uh, and short range starts at 4 and lower. So 26 and 25 both fall into this uh, range uh, easily. Oh, and these units might be able to dodge. Wow, okay, so we have to have a look at the, quickly at least at the dodging rules because they expanded all their movement already. Now the ITO, the ATGM we're trying to fire at them, has a speed of 19, which means it's lower than the range of 26 or 25. That could mean that as long as the target has a movement order check, it gets one point of movement to move behind cover. But I don't know what is happening now since um, the ATGM or no, the T-72 has already spent all their movement points. So let's quickly bring up the PDF. That's why I have it open. ATGM dodge. Must have a move command. Must have spotted the firing unit during the current turn spotting phase. Okay, nope. No dodge for the T-72s. We haven't spotted the ATGMs uh, during the spotting phase. So that makes it much more easier. Let's get my A4 piece of paper and note that the US ITOs are now firing one missile each. Uh, they have a, an ammo limit of 15. I think this scenario uh, takes 15 turns. And so they probably won't get into any sort of ammo shortage. I'm just trying to make everything as well proper as I can, at least. 
Um, that would be another interesting question. How long is this now actually taking? That's 15 turns. All right. <clears throat> uh, so we decided to fire the ATGM. Uh, we already came to terms with the range, which is point blank range. We already noted the ammo expenditure. So we are going to look at the two hit, at the two hit modifiers and the base chance to hit. So I'm trying to show you this. Um, close the window with the, with the screen. There you go. So we have this, these two charts right here. And the AP hit table says that firing on at point blank, we have a 90% chance of hitting. Now, the target size is zero. Now the target is moving and we're firing with an ATGM netting us another minus one um, hit modifier. Anything else? Short held, shooter damage, shooter suppressed, brew up, barrage, open, closed shaft, overwatch. There we go. Overwatch fire. So that's a minus three actually. And that's it. I think that's it. So it's a minus four in total. What side, like, uh, kind of sights do we have? Optical. So nothing that gives us another bonus. No, it doesn't. So we have a minus four netting us with um, a new chance to hit of 54%. Is there anything else I have to consider for the hitting? Um, in theory, the unit grade, but I think that doesn't make no season is basically the default grade so it doesn't make a difference fields of fire is all right too the ito has a 360 degree field of fire yeah so i think we can roll the die and see what's happening so we said that we have a 56 percent chance of hitting 54%. I'm getting my numbers all mixed up today. Uh, that's a 53. So barely a hit. Then let's use the Soviet dice. And we obviously missed because we were using Soviet dice. Uh, so 53, the ATGM that hit, which means that the next step would be to check where the ATGM actually hit. And from what I can tell, this is going to be a front hit in the, let's say, front aspect of the tank. I think it would have been smarter if we waited, or not waited, but if we would have uh, triggered the Overwatch fire earlier, uh, so we would have hit the front side, since before the unit turned, they were facing, uh, they had a facing like this. But let's just roll with it for the moment and try to remember that the next time and we trigger overwatch fire. So the five, the 10 dice basically indicates where we hit. And the AP hit location for the front and rolling a five is a hull front. We don't have any, any other modifiers, I think. Well, we do have the BU modifier. Let's see what the BU modifier does again. No. Let's see if I read that correctly. 7.11. Rule 7.11. There we go. BU modifier based on the turret layout, blah, blah, blah. The BU modifier does not increase the overall chance of damage, it just increases the chance of knockout. Uh, but, that, but that impacts damage, not the AP hit location as it seems. Not sure why this is listed in the AP hit locations. Okay, let's uh, apply the rule the way I 
understand at the moment. So basically we're adding 2 to the damage roll, but not to the 10. So we're still hitting the halt front. Let's get on with this. T72 AV halt front. Uh, that's mm, halt front. That's an 80, an armor of 80, and we have a penetration of 126. That's definitely more than uh, an 80, but we do have reactive armor and CE armor, if that's the correct term for it, chemical energy armor. And so let's quickly have a look at which armor bonus to apply first. Uh, this is great. No, why don't you CE type armor? Okay. Okay, and where does it say something about whether to add the CE bonus first or the reactive armor? Okay, we go with the uh, CE armor first, and then we add the reactive armor. So let's see how that turns out. Special armor. Uh, and the T72 gets a bonus of 1.25. Uh, how do I read this charge? Let's see. Well, in that case, we can, I guess we can make uh, the calculation easily ourselves. So we basically take uh, a quarter of 80, which will be 20, and added to the armor that makes it 100. And then we cross-reference the 100 with the with the light Eura column. And that would probably be 180. Do I read that correctly? Oh, we have to check whether the or one of the Eura tiles are actually hit. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, we have to roll a die whether the era is effective and if it's not uh, the shot penetrates and if it is effective uh, the shot is not effective which means we have to roll a seven or less for the era to be effective and that's an eight so the era is not effective it's a penetration and we go to the next step which would mean to uh, have a look at the damage roll the ones though the one dies in that case which is a three we add 2 for the special brew up modifier, which nets us as 5. And then we're going to look at the Ito, which says it knocks out enemy tanks on a roll of 3 to 5, on a damage roll of 3 to 5. So we actually have our first blood. We knock out a T72 in the sex. Uh, let's put this right here. Okay, let's go back to the screen for the uh, for the webcam. Okay, I think that's it for the uh, shooting. Is it? I hope at least. I hope at least. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident. We did that somewhat correctly. As always, you can feel invited, or you actually are invited to correct me whenever you want to invite it in the comments. Good. Overwatch fire has been triggered. We have another platoon to move, which is this one here. And what we do with it is we're going to move it along this ridge here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and we would have probably changed facing of these tanks so we correct that quickly and that's it for the movement step Whew, okay let's uh, see again what the uh, sequence of play says movement phase la 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 movement overrun we did that second air phase 
adjustment step. Adjust turret and visualization step. Do we have to adjust turrets anywhere? I don't think so. Do we? No. No, adjust turret steps. So what's the visualization step? In any order, the vehicles may adjust their turrets and ground units set radar to active or inactive. And vehicles activate their IR or WL searchlights. Okay. Adjust full cover. That's for infantry. Adjust remove suppression step. Okay, we don't have any suppressions on the board at the moment. Adjust remove suppression modifiers. No. 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 No, no, no. Okay, I think. I think that's it. So we would have uh, done lots of administrative things that are not applicable at the moment. <sighs> but yeah, I think that's our first turn. And we have a kill, which is nice. <laughs> and that's a, that's a good start into the game. I just hope we did everything somewhat correctly. I hope you're not too annoyed, but I warned you already that I'm going to look up uh, quite a bit, especially at the beginning. Um, I guess I'm going to take a break. But since I'm already in the gist, I will just start or just keep playing and keep recording for now. Let's see if I split that up into multiple episodes. But for now, let's just take a break and uh, also take a breath and rest from that experience of playing MBT with me here. Thanks for joining. 